Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're continuing work on our low poly stylized cottage. Working on some of the details such as the roof tiles and bricks. Do check out the other playlist on my channel. You can also go to my website gabbit.co.uk which has all my free courses in order. Also if you like what I do then you can check out my new character course. It takes you right from nothing through to making a great game character. Okay, so here's where we got up to last time. We're gonna work on the details. Let's start with the wood surrounding the windows. So I'm in edit mode on this front shape already, and I'm going to select the edge loop that's going on the inside of the window. So I'll go to edge mode, alt left click to select that edge loop there, and shift alt left click to select that one as well. Let's press full stop or period key on my numpad to zoom in on that. And then I'm going to duplicate it. So shift D to duplicate, then press Y to bring it forward slightly. This will help us because then we can use this shape for our wood surround without having to sort of extrude a cube all the way around. I'll press P, which is to separate, and I'll select by selection. So whatever selected will be separated from the main object. So I click that, tab into object mode, and now select the new object, which is just here. And you can see it's selected by itself. Back into edit mode, and let's come to front view here. I'm going to select all and then scale it down just a touch and then E to extrude and scale it up. I scaled it down first so that the walls would sort of intersect it slightly. Let's come around to the side here. We could use a solidify modifier on this. So add modifier and then solidify and add that thickness there. Let's just see whether it's lining up with the rest of the wood. I'll just select all and G to grab in the wire to move it back just a touch. Now these pieces of wood have this sort of bevel shape on them. So we could extrude these out and scale them down slightly to create that, or we can add modifier and the bevel modifier. So you can see the bevel working there. I'm going to minimize the solidify so we can concentrate on the bevel, and then I'll just bring it down slightly to 0.02 by the looks of things, and we've got a bevel going around there. Actually 0.01 is going to be a bit better. Let's go to object mode, and then just zoom out and see if that looks okay. And that's looking fine. What I want as well is a pane of glass on the inside. So a similar thing, let's go into edit mode, select this inside edge here, shift D to duplicate. And it looks a bit odd at the moment because it's got some modifiers on it. Don't worry too much about those. And then I'll press Y to bring it back so it comes into the middle and just scale it up slightly so it intersects the other shape. I'll press P to separate by selection into object mode and let's select our shape. And I'll just isolate it quickly. It looks very odd because it's got this separate thing here. That's because of our modifiers. I'll just delete both of those and then come back out of isolation mode. And now I can go into edit mode. I'll just go to wireframe so we can actually see it. And you can see it's selected there. And with everything selected, F to fill and it will fill in a shape there. Let's go back to solid mode and you can see it there working fine. Now some wooden supports. So the easy way for that is to come out of edit mode into object mode. Let's just select this beam here, shift D to duplicate in the Z and let's just scale it down. Come to front view, G to grab, move that into position, Shift D, R90, so duplicate and rotate 90 degrees and move that into position. And that intersecting a bit too much there, so I'll just press G to grab in the Y and move that just in front of the other one. And there we go, we've got a window. So exactly the same process for the window down here, so I'll select our big shape here, the walls here, into edit mode, alt left click, shift alt left click, shift D to duplicate, in the Y to bring it out slightly. I just like to bring it out slightly so I can see it. P to separate by selection, so tick the selection. Into object mode, select our new object, into edit mode, select all. Let's come around to the front here, and E to extrude and scale. Around there is good. It's scaled a little bit non-uniform. We can just press G to grab and Z to pull the bottom up a bit. And let's alt left click on the inside and just scale that down slightly so it intersects. And we can do the same thing. We've already got the modifiers for this one and we can just copy them across. So if I go to object mode and with this one selected, shift select the other one that's got the modifiers already on there. Now because that's slightly yellow compared to the orange here, that means that's the active object and that's what we'll be copying from. If I press Control L now, we can link modifiers. And you can see suddenly it's got all the same modifiers as the one up here. Let's click back on the wall, back into edit mode, and I want that 
inside edge here let's go to wireframe to see that alt left click and shift alt left click shift d to duplicate and press enter to set it p to separate by selection and we've got our new object so back into object mode select our new object if we can find it in there i think i've got it selected g then y let's just move it back a little bit there we go and now into edit mode select all and f to fill in that face back to solid mode and let's see what we've got it's all looking good i'm going to just duplicate these ones up here and bring them down here so let's make sure i'm in object mode select these two let's go to front view shift d to duplicate to bring them down to the bottom here and i'll need to scale this one up in the z and g then z and we've got our window at the front there just bring the glass forward to touch g then y there we go so the windows let's think about adding some bricks onto the front so let's shift right click and we'll add some bricks here shift a to add mesh cube scale that down scale in the x let's just zoom into that a bit okay i think i want to add a bevel to this as well i can go into edit mode and select everything and control b to bevel or i'll undo that i can use the bevel modifier so add modifier bevel now you can see that the bevel isn't working in a uniform way and that's because if i press n on my keyboard and go to item you can see that the scale is non-uniform so control a to apply the scale suddenly it goes all strange when i do that and we need to just bring down the offset to somewhere around there and that looks fine for a brick it's a bit wide i'll just press scale then y and let's bring it back so it only just protrudes from our wall that's great let's go to front view shift d to duplicate and we've got a couple of bricks there we only want to scatter these bricks around and give the illusion that this is a brick wall rather than fill the whole wall in with bricks so i'll select these two shift d to duplicate and bring it over to here and i'll do a triple brick for this one maybe a single brick somewhere else so shift d to duplicate i can press g then shift y so it doesn't move in the y axis and move it into position without being in front view and that looks fine shift d to duplicate and shift y move that into position and that's looking good now what i had for my cottage was a window board at the front here and i think that looks better than the wood surround that's there at the moment so i'm going to duplicate this go to front view shift d move that into position and scale in the x remember the bevel is going to be slightly out now so control a and set the scale and the bevel will go back to how it should be I'll scale that in y and i've got a window board just there move that into position of course that means i can delete the faces along the bottom here if you want to optimize it for games and things then you'll certainly want to be doing that but i'm not going to worry too much i'm just going to resize it slightly so it sits nicely around about there i think okay so that all looks good now with these bricks we can reuse them so i'll just select all of them go to side view shift d to duplicate and y in the y axis and let's move those to the back there come around to the back let's just get them in the right position g then y and for this we might want to move those and scatter them around a bit more so i'll press ctrl 1 to go to back view or reverse front view as i called it the other day and i'll just select these ones shift d to duplicate and move them into position the window at the top here i can duplicate from the front but this one i'll need to do a new window so i'll just quickly time lapse me doing that okay so that's that done i'll also add some bricks to the side so i'll just duplicate these ones go to front view shift d to duplicate and rz90 and let's go to side view and just put them into position don't worry about the rotation just yet we'll sort that out in a second so just shift d to duplicate and move them around so that they're at random points select all of them go to front view and let's go to wireframe for this and g to grab oh select all of them g to grab and then just move them into position from the side here so that they're overlapping let's go to solid mode and make sure that's working and with them all selected we can press m move to new collection and we'll call these bricks sidewall now when we go to the collection up here we've got bricks sidewall and we can right click on that select objects to select them all at the same time so let's go to front view again shift each duplicate and move those across bring up wireframe so we can see what we're looking at and i'll bring those down to the bottom here and we'll need some extra ones up here so let's go to 
that side view, solid mode, and I'll select these ones here. And now Shift D to duplicate, and then Z twice is the local Z axis. And then G then Y, I can move them into position. And remembering that local Z axis will move them in line. I'll just move them in just a touch to around there. And that's looking great. Lastly then is the roof tiles. Shift right click to move our 3D cursor into position. Shift A to add and then a cube. Scale that down. And I'll just create a roof tile type shape. So I'll bring it out just a touch. Scale in the X. And let's just scale it up a touch more to around about this sort of shape. And I'll scale in the Z. So a nice chunky big tile. I want to give it a bit of character. So I'll go into edit mode and do a loop cut down the middle. And at the bottom here, I'll press G to grab in the Z and G in the Y, so it's a little bit distorted. And there's a roof tile. I'll press Shift D to duplicate that one and just bring it across to the side. And I'll have three different types of roof tile. So I'll scale this one in the Y. And I'll go into edit mode and into wireframe. Let's move this across the other side slightly and maybe this bit down just to add some adaptation. And then one more, Shift D, and then grab in the Y axis, and then move it across in the Y. And let's change this one into edit mode, into face mode this time, G then Y. And maybe this one will be slightly different. I'll select this edge just here, and Control B to bevel. So I'll sort of bevel that edge, and it's got a bit of a curve to it. And maybe just stick these down a bit more like this. So three different tiles there. Back to solid mode. And now we have to position these tiles on the roof. What I find easiest is to put them into groups like we have with the bricks and then place them on. So I'll put them all together for now. So G then Y, G then Z, keeping them in line and G then X. So that's slightly behind the other one like this. Not that far, about there. And then this one, G then Y sort of overlapping that one slightly, maybe rotating the X and just position it. I'll press full stop to zoom out a bit and position it so that it's sort of overlapping the others. And there's a bit of rotation there, a bit of wonkiness to make it seem more natural and awkward. I think actually it's a bit too much, maybe about there. So the tiles are sort of getting very worn and blown around by the wind and all that sort of thing. So now we've got a group of tiles there. I'll press Shift D and then Y and move that across and I'll adjust the shape slightly. So maybe this one I'll delete and then this one I'll just move up and then rotate it. So it's slightly different and rotate that one. And then duplicate these two, Shift D then Y and another set here. I'll just grab this one at the back here move that down slightly and I'll rotate this a bit differently about there I think one more I think shift D to duplicate and I'll duplicate this one precisely and just rotate it there we go okay so with all these selected we can do a similar thing I'll come to front view and rotate them and just move them into position we have to roughly put move them into position this time and then we'll have to be a bit more precise with these ones Okay, so we need to randomly put these around the place. So Shift D to duplicate. It's a good idea to put them on the edges. So overlapping the top beam there and overlapping the side slightly as well. That sort of breaks up this hard edge. So I'll do the same with this one over here. Shift D to duplicate and bring it down to the corner here, let's say. Because there's such a curve, I'm going to have to keep going into front view to position it. So round about there. That's good. Shift D to duplicate those ones. Just rotate them slightly. And again, move them into position. And I'll have to adapt these ones really slightly. So rotate them to there. Maybe I'll make this one smaller so it doesn't look so similar. So we can now move these around into position. Add a little bit of variation every now and again. Now depending on the style is how big or small you want these things. They're fairly small at the moment, so you might want to just scale them up a bit to make them look more 
sort of chunky and stylized. But that's up to you and your style. A lot of them are angled towards the camera, so watch out for that. You might need to rotate by the local Z there just to give them a bit of variation. And probably another one down the edge here to break up this edge. Okay, so lastly, we'll want to be selecting these roof tiles and putting them into a collection as well. I'm just box selecting them at the moment to make it easier and then go around to the side and press control to delete the other objects that we don't want. So control box selecting and that will remove things from the selection. Okay, so we've got all those. M to move to connection, new collection, roof tiles. With those selected, let's go to top view. I've got the light selected there as well, so I'll just select that quickly. Press M to move to collection and move that back to my scene collection. And then with my roof tiles collection, right click on that, select objects, Shift D to duplicate, RZ 180, and G to grab. Move that across the other side. Might need a bit of adaptation this. I'll move these to a new collection, Roof Tiles 2, and press OK, and then I can delete some of them that I'm not going to need, and let's just reposition some of these. Okay, so lots of the details completed there, and you can add your own style and take on those as you see fit. So remember to share your work, comment if you've got any ideas, and lastly, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.